Welcome to Well-Crafted Studio. I'm here to help you live inspired and create with purpose. So let's get started. Hi, welcome back. So today's tutorial is how to take your handwritten recipe and turn it into an heirloom craft. So I'm going to be showing you guys what to do with the handwritten recipes that you have and how to pull those into Cricut Design Space and turn them into crafts. So the first part of this is actually starting with the um, recipe itself and you can start with a photograph of it. And I created a first part to this video, which is like the first video. And that um, actually goes through how to take that JPEG of that photograph, pull it into your camera um, photo editing app, and then go ahead and pull it into Magic Eraser and clean it up. So there's some tips and tricks there that make it easier. Um, and then once you've got that saved as a PNG file, we're going to pull it into Cricut Design Space. And that's when the real fun begins. So this video is going to show you how to take that photo, um, open it up, design with it, and then how to cut it on out of HTV, and then how to iron it onto your apron or your tea towel. It's a really, really cool way to remember somebody or to preserve a family memory. So we're working with a special K-Bar recipe from my grandmother that's in her handwriting. So I've already got the file cleaned up and saved. So I'm going to put upload and do upload image and then browse and I'm going to grab it. There's the PNG file. So the reason I didn't go actually, so what I did is I, I put it, cleaned it up in the mobile app, but I couldn't process it through Cricut's design, our Cricut's design space mobile because when I tried, it lost a lot of the detail. So when you process an image through the desktop, it actually does have a slightly different process which works out in our favor. So it's right here. I'm gonna choose complex because there's a lot of little details and that's what I missed in the mobile. And here you can see, so a lot of real good detail here. This is a real nice recipe. And I did do a quite a bit to clean it up, but I show you guys how to do that. It's, it's a lot of fun just to sit and kind of putz a little bit but now I've got this cool, cool image that I can create a cut file with. So there, save as a cut file. I clicked on it so it went green and put save. And now I have it ready to go into my canvas. So I'm just gonna click on this and put insert image. And there it is. So now I'm gonna size it down. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm pretty sure, I think I want it to be seven inches wide. So I'm just gonna change that. And here it is. Now you have kind of some options here. What you can do is you can leave it like this, or you can go in and you can add the lines that are typical and the square around it, like typical for a recipe. Or you can go in and you can add some other elements as well. So what I'm gonna do is just show you guys quickly. If I were to wanna put the lines, I would go to shapes, square, and then I would unclick this lock and I pull this up and I would make it skinny and long. And I can make this bigger so I can show you guys better. And I think I figured out that, let's see, it was 1.49 maybe? Or 0 0.049, I think I had it at. You don't want to go too much thinner than that. And actually, I could probably make this a little bit bigger. Actually, the height is going to be 7 inches. So we're working with 11.16. So this will still fit on my mat, um, my 12, in 12 by 12 inch mat. But it's going to be a really nice size. So we've got one of these, and I make sure that I have this at 0 0.0049, and then I can go ahead and lock it, and then slide it up here. And it's not as long as I need it to be, so I can just go ahead and grab this and pull it. And then look at, and there I've got one line. 
Now what I want to do is go ahead and add the other lines. So I'm just going to take this one, I'm going to duplicate it, I'm going to pull it down here, I'll make a shorter one to put there. But I'm going to show you guys this. So I'm going to go ahead and put another one over here. Again, I'm going to unlock it. And I could probably just go ahead and change this. Seven inches. It actually needs to be a little bit longer. All right, there we go. So I'm going to lock this up and then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. I need it one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate it a few times. And then when I have all that I need, I'm going to go ahead and click off on the recipe itself. And I'm going to go and I'm going to select all. And don't want that top one though. Oops. Got all of them, but. So that's the top one. So I don't want that one. So I'm going to hold my shift key down and just go ahead and grab all of those other ones. And then I'm going to go up to a line. I'm going to use the left align, align left. There we go. And then with them still selected, I'm going to come to this and I'm going to do distribute horizontally. And that'll give me equal spacing. So, and actually I'm not sure that that's the right spacing yet. So I'm going to go back and turn on that recipe. And pull this over and look at that. Okay. So my, it, the, isn't quite right, the duplication. So I'm going to pull the bottom one where I want it to be. And then the top one is where I want it to be. So now I can go through and I could probably just hold down and drag. Oh, I got that one too. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and select these again. And do that step again where we distribute vertically. Okay, so now it's evenly distributed, which kind of mimics the lines really nicely. Now, if you notice, um, there is the recipe because it was a photo, it wasn't complete, it was a little bit warped. And so some of this is kind of coming up a little bit. But part of that was just the handwriting as well. So I can go ahead and um, putz with that a little bit make it a little bit bigger probably and there it sits on the lines a little bit more okay so I'm just gonna fuss with that a little bit okay so I'll make it smaller again so that's kind of like if you guys wanted to have those lines that growing across when you clean up your recipe the lines itself are really hard to kind of um, to transfer and so I just went ahead and erased them and knowing that I would go ahead and put them in here instead. So this is kind of a way to do it. And then you can go ahead and put a box around it by adding another shape or square. Oops. And I'm gonna go ahead and unlock that. I'll just unlock it up here, drag it so it covers. I'll make my screen smaller so I can see this better. And turn it white. I'm going to put arrange and send to back. So I can go ahead and kind of arrange this a little bit. There you go. And now I'm noticing because again, it was a, uh, the recipe itself is a little bit crooked. If I want, what I can do is go ahead and straighten this a little bit. Or I can just move the recipe card or the card itself. And straighten that a little bit. So I'm going to come up to the here 
and just turn it just a bit. Okay, now if I go to, went ahead and cut this, I wouldn't get a line here, it would just be a cut. And so I actually want a line, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and I will just duplicate that as well. And then I'm going to send it to the back. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull this out until it's about the size I want for that edging. And then I'm going to take this square and again hold down this so I have them both selected. Come up to a line and then I'm going to choose center. And that's going to perfectly stack those two things. So now I think what I'm going to do is actually because I want that line, I'm going to cut or slice one of those out of the other. And so I don't really want any of this stuff up here right now. Oh, but I can actually take my lines and I can go ahead and attach those together. I don't do that right now though. Okay, so now I have my two squares here. I'm gonna go ahead and select them both and come down to slice. When you slice, you can only slice one thing from another thing. So you can only have two things selected at a time. If you try to slice two or three things or three or four things at a time, it doesn't work. So it'll be grayed out. So now if you look at the top here, you can see slice results. So I'm gonna just get rid of that one and get rid of that one. And now I have that border. I'm gonna to hold on to that. And you can see it's looking pretty good there. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this all on and arrange things the way we want them. And then we're going to be ready to cut if we'd like. Or there is kind of an, an odd space on the side there. So I think what I might want to do is go ahead and add something to fill it in. The original recipe was one of those current cards that had like the, it had a cuckoo clock over here, which when the, you know, looked, it's not what I wanted. So I took the cuckoo clock out, but now there is this kind of space here that I just kind of blank and it's fine without it, but I think I would kind of like to do something with it. So what I think I'll do is go ahead to upload and I've got my grandma's signature here that I cleaned up as well. And now I can go ahead and add it right there if I wanted. So that would look pretty cute. The other thing I could do is I could go ahead and go for like more of a modern fun look, you know, make sure that you know it's art and go ahead and do a great big, huge love mom over it. That would look good. But I think what we'll do for this one is we're just going to go ahead and put it over here. Fill that space in nicely. We could put a heart behind it, I guess, if we wanted. Come over to shapes, heart. Let's see if that's right. Unlock it so I can change the constraints. And let's see. Let's go ahead and turn it to a different color so we can see it. And we're going to send to back. Okay, that's pretty cute. But I think what would be really cool is to actually have that heart and then maybe to um, have it as a cutout or a, an outline around and then maybe have the, the love mom cut out from it. So what I can do is go ahead and slice that from the heart. So I'll select those two and slice. And now you can see up here I have the signature twice and then I have a heart with it cut out. So we'll get rid of those. Go ahead and make that a little smaller so it fits into the size of our recipe. And now this is a little crooked here and again that's because it was a handwritten recipe and so if I wanted to I could go ahead and slice this out and then I could turn it a little but I think it's just fine for what we're doing. 
So now what I'm going to do is I didn't make those lines. I need to weld those to my to my actual recipe because in some places the lines overlap the recipe itself. So what I'm going to do is come down to weld. And there we go. It's all one. So you can see here now that there's just that one result. And we've got our border. And if we wanted to, we could select both of those and do that center align again. Let's see, that recipe's still a little crooked. Then I'll just move that a little bit. Okay, now that looks really good. So what we've got now is it looks like a recipe. It's got the lines. It's handwritten and sized the way we want. So I can go ahead and save my project now. I'll call it Grandma's Recipe. I'll just call it Special Key. So Special Key Bars, you guys may not know um, the type, like them by this name, but they're those, they're almost like Rice Krispie Bars, but they've got peanut butter in them. And they've got that layer of chocolate like smeared across the top that is so, so good. These are my favorite um, bars ever. So let's see, save special key bars. And there we go. Oops, I forgot to attach those. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select them both and then attach. So we've got our recipe, everything's a cut, cut, cut. And I'm just gonna save it again, now that I've attached them. Okay, and now we can go ahead and make it. So I've got my maker selected. There it is. And now it's telling me that it's bigger than 11.5. So actually, because I do want to use my 12 inch by 12 inch, I'm going to say go back here a little bit. And I wanted it to be 11.5 was the finished. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to say maker. Oops, and then make it. And now because I'm going to be using um, heat transfer vinyl, I know that I need to go ahead and mirror it. So I'm going to do that immediately. That's going to flip the design. And now it's all ready to go. So I will change the camera view. Press continue. Okay, so I took my, I used my mat and my um, clear cut knife, my ruler to cut my vinyl. So I have that here. And it's cut to the size on the screen and just to kind of review so it's heat transfer vinyl which is an iron on vinyl and it comes with a shiny side and a matte side the shiny side is shiny because it's actually the carrier sheet or the transfer sheet which is a thin piece of plastic um, that it, the vinyl is stuck to and so that actually is the part that goes down because we're going to cut through the vinyl part so i'm just going to pull my mat out here And I'm using the light, the light blue light stick mat. You can use the standard grip, which is the green. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place it on here like so. All right, and there we go. And let's get all set up on the screen. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna load my mat up. And everything's set. I've got the everyday iron on vinyl selected. Fine point blade, everything's mirrored. Check, check, check. And put that flashing C button, the cricket button. That's my go. And we're gonna go. Okay, so we're getting ready to do our iron on. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and I'm at the cricket.com heat guide. And that page is gonna show me exactly what I need to set my um, easy press to. So I have the easy press, like the original one. So I'm gonna click on that. And then select heat transfer material. I know I'm using the everyday iron on. 
and then the base material, I looked at the tag and it said cotton. And then I do have the Easy Press Matte. So I'm going to do apply. And that is so handy dandy because it shows me exactly what I need to do for this. Now there is a kind of a caveat that if you're not using the everyday iron on, um, like say I'm using sizer or something like that, then I would have to like, you know, this isn't quite correct. And in which case you just kind of try what you think you need. Um, sizer does have some recommendations for the easy press as well, I think. So yeah. All right. So let's get started here. It says 315 degrees at 30 seconds. So I'm going to turn on my easy press. I've got the change the temperature up here. So I'm going to click it till it gets to 315. Oops. 315. And then I've got it already set at 30 seconds. So that's going to heat up and I'm going to get my towel ready. Okay. So I'm just getting started cleaning up this recipe that we cut. And I wanted to give you guys a couple of quick tips. And so one of those tips is to go ahead and pull out the little areas that are in between things first. So the center of the P, the center of the O, that sort of thing. Um, and what that does is it, it makes it easier to get those pieces out. So right now I can go ahead and pull them up and then brush them off to the side. If I was to have already cleaned up or pulled a lot of this away, this transfer sheet back here that we um, talked about before is sticky. And so if I was to try to brush something, well, it's just gonna get like right here, you can see it just kind of got caught there. And so now it's like harder to go ahead. I have to kind of push it off and or pick it up in order to remove it. So it just makes it a little bit more difficult. The other thing I guess is to use tools like this. You can use these weeding tools that are specifically made for weeding, or you can go ahead and find some dental picks online. Those work too, I guess. I like the, the Cricut brand things. It's kind of fun. Um, the other thing that you can do is create weeding lines. Now weeding lines are um, little lines that you cut yourself in between into the vinyl in between um, cut areas. So what you're trying to do is um, when you pull, the bigger the piece that you pull, the less control you have over it. Um, so as you're pulling, if you have these little break lines um, where it naturally stops, then you have more control over what you're trying to pull. And when you do pull, um, pulling from a, like kind of at a diagonal seems to help a lot. And then a lot of times when there's like a center, like there's a little, little tiny place, like um, the dot of an eye or something like that, what I'll do is go ahead and just um, cut a little box around that so that when I do go ahead and start to pull, that area won't pull up and I can go back in and do a little detail, you know, be a little more careful about it. So for instance, this little line here could very easily have pulled up when I was um, pulling up the rest of it. But because I did a little box around it, I'm now able to do a little bit more control. And the other kind of tip too is that you can go ahead and as you're pulling, grab a corner and then push down on the part that you want to stay. And that will keep it in place as well. Now say, something does come up that um, was supposed to stay down like some of this like this little tiny f here is already coming up a little bit what i'll do is i'll just kind of pull it off to the side and keep it someplace um, safe until i'm all done and then i'll come back in after i'm all finished weeding everything and i'll take those little pieces with a tweezer or with my weeding tool and i'll put them back in place so you can do that which is actually pretty convenient so just because something came up that wasn't supposed to come up doesn't mean that you're hosed. <laughs> so you can, you can still salvage it. And then just kind of being aware of um, what gets pulled up and what gets pulled down. And for that, um, so like here we're pulling up the letters where be here we're trying to keep the letters in place because we're doing a reverse here. So kind of just, you know, taking it easy, being careful, using good light, using the right tools, um, doing things in process. And then I guess the other thing I would recommend is just throwing on something on Netflix or, you know, when you have something that's this detailed, going ahead and um, watching something else as you're working really helps the time fly. Um, 
and I guess that's that's pretty much it for the weeding tips. So we're gonna move on and do the next part of this. Okay, so we're about ready to do this. I've got my ironing blanket on my surface. I've got my design weeded, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put the ironing um, pad down. And I've got my flower sack, which I got from uh, flower sack tea towel that I got from Fleet Farm a while back. Um, they're actually really cheap and they're really nice there if you want to buy in quantity. And then what I did is I folded it in half and I got a little crease line here. And that's going to show me where the center of this is. Now if you're creating a product of, just for yourself, this tea towel, then depending on how you use your tea towels, like some people just fold them in half and then hang them over their, um, their um, oven rail. Some people like to fold them in thirds. I did a little research when I was selling these and when you purchase them, most times they're they're folded in thirds and so that the design itself is completely centered in the middle of it. So that's what we're doing. And I've weeded my thing. And I'm gonna center that right where my little crease line was. Make sure the towel is flat. Things are kind of lined up. And I might actually give it a little bit of a space down here, probably about two inches. Make sure everything's kind of lined up and I'll move it forward so you guys can see a little better. Okay, and then I just take my, oh, and it said to warm it up first. So I'm gonna do that. I got my easy press. It just said preheat for five seconds. Now I like to move mine around, which I shouldn't do because it's not an iron, it's a heat press. And so you're supposed to just set it down and leave it down. And, um, Except for with the mini easy press, with that one you are supposed to move around a little bit. All right, put it back in its cradle, line up my thing here. Okay. Now if I wanted to be super, super careful, I could come through and I could use my um, measuring um, ruler and just make sure that this is even here, but we're gonna go for it. Okay, so my heat press won't actually cover the entire design, so I'm gonna set it so that it covers all the way to the edge, and then I'm gonna to have to re like move it over. So let's go ahead and turn that on. You can see it counting down. Okay, now I'm just going to move this over a little bit and just do this edge and then do it again. I did say light pressure, so I guess what I should be doing is just put like putting my hand here and kind of holding it. Uh, I'm not pushing down on it, I'm just applying a little bit of pressure. Um, and then it says flip and press for 15 seconds. It also says to do a cool peel, and frankly, I have a lot more, um, a lot, it works better for me to do a warm peel usually, so I rarely do the cool peel. But, you know, follow instructions and all is usually a good idea. All right, so I'm gonna flip this over and do the back of it. I'll just do 15, watch it do 15 seconds, and then I'll move it over and do the other 15 seconds on the other part. I really like the easy press. Um, I know a lot of people really prefer the heat press, like an, an actual heat press. But um, for what I do with my home crafts mostly, um, I really, I think the easy press is a really nice solution and I don't like having to store big, huge things. So for me, this has been great. All right, so we're just gonna check it a little bit. And, all right, we'll do it like they say and we'll wait and do the cold peel.
Okay, so I paused it just a second, the camera, so I could go ahead and let this cool. Uh, warm peel means that it's warm to the touch. Cool peel means it's cooled. So let's go ahead and peel this up. Okay, so it did pull a little bit right there. And then right here, so there's a little O that came up here. And what that is probably is that I had it flipped upside down. So the O came off when I was weeding and I put it back on. And probably what I did is I didn't couldn't tell which was the, sh the mat side, the transfer side, and which was the, so which was the adhesive side and which was not. And so it looks a little bit darker than the rest. So it probably is the like it was flipped the wrong side. So what I'll do is just use my, I'll peel it off and then use my easy press and I will go ahead and fix that. And I'll fix this K there too. All right. I'll use the mini easy press, use the transfer. Um, I'll use a Teflon sheet to go over the top. If somehow you like really screwed something up, like say this K right here, um, what you can do is you can go ahead and peel it, like warm it up just a little bit, peel it off, and then just recut that one um, piece. And then you can go ahead and add that in. Okay, and it's all set. I did go back in and fix that K. You can always go and fix things. And I think it looks awesome. I'm super excited to give this to my mom for Mother's Day. I also did this one where I took my grandmother's um, signature and I made it big and put it over it. So I thought I'd show you guys how that turned out. And then because this was a smaller design, I took out the um, here's what's cooking in the kitchen of just because that was so small and it was hard to weed and I lost letters. And I mean, you can see here how small some of this gets. And I am not one of those people that I go over excited about weeding things. So I tend not to do that if I don't have to. Now, I know some of you do, so you guys, more power to you. Uh, I've seen those mandalas. This is, I decided to put it on an apron that I had. And so what I did is I kind of printed it out again, took out the space or the, um, the rectangle around it. And then I put it a little bit off center on my apron. Um, pockets but you can see how I mean that just looks pretty cool it's it's gonna be a great gift so yeah different things that you can do with this um, if you guys missed the first video on this it's how to clean up the recipes and you can catch that on my blog or here at YouTube and I hope that if you have any questions you'll let me know and thanks for watching thanks for watching this tutorial and if you found it helpful, please like, comment, or subscribe below. And for more tutorials like this, visit wellcraftedstudio.com.